had some challenges with the rear brakes on this thing. Uh, first, the original brake line got destroyed. Uh, it was eat up by the tire, by the way it was routed. That's uh, history. And the bracket that stabilized it, the, the arm, I'll try to do that, the arm right there that goes in and attaches to the swing arm to keep the rotor from spinning on the axle, was not, uh, wasn't able to put the bolts through. Um, I, I had ordered the parts, it took them two to three weeks to come in. And we took it up to the dealer to get the work done. First we discovered that the brake line was the wrong brake line. Uh, it, it couldn't be put on. But he did get a new bracket and he used the new bracket. And, you know, I, I keep kicking myself because uh, I could have seen this if I had looked. Uh, this is the wrong bracket. Um, the bracket that's on here is flat. It is just like the bracket uh, on the CT and the gear up. Um, you can see it's flat, goes straight through. There's no spacer back here. The correct bracket for the M70 has an additional spacer here. It looks to be about three-eighths of an inch. To bring this bracket out further, um, the purpose for that is to take up the extra space because the swing arm on the M70 is different. It's actually a little wider back here. You can see this flare out to, I guess, accommodate the suspension. For whatever reason, it is wider. That makes this, this point, you see the, the curve in the swing arm here as it gets wider. That makes this mount point further away from the brake. And you can see that this has now recessed the washer on the inside. That this, this bushing, it should be full on this bushing and it's not. It has managed to pull itself out over this washer. And I know exactly when that happened, and I'll, I'll go into that in just a moment. That's why the M71 that I took and adjusted, I actually bored the holes slightly larger to get the bolts to line up to go in. It also helps it make sense as to why these holes may be out of line. It's the original bracket, and then they, I'm guessing by hand, weld on the bushing on the back of this to add space. Now to solve this problem today, and hopefully there's no additional damage, I'm actually going to take this bracket off and I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to play it by ear, I'm going to make sure this gets back on the bushing, but I think it needs about three, inch, uh, three eighths of an inch of space in order to space this back out and I'm going to do that with steel washers. So let me tell you a little bit about what happened. Uh, when the bike was finished, the repairs were done. I knew that this, this brake line was going back on. No, no problem, no leaks, uh, dry on both sides. Um, the first thing that I noticed is, despite having a parking brake when I arrived, I had no parking brake at all. And uh, when I left, the brakes felt softer. And I had some pull to the right, like the sidecar was, you know, braking more, like it was out of balance. But I did have rear brakes. But they, they made an odd noise, um, depending on what was going on, especially if I, I made a turn. And I couldn't quite figure out. I could feel a little bit of shutter in the back end. We, we went and got fuel, and then on the trip home, I had to make a, a fast stop because a lady pulled out in front of me. And when I did, I went to brake hard, and there was a loud... Um, uh, not so much loud as pronounced a feel in the bike, a frame pop. I mean, it, it was a good pow. Um, and immediately after that, I noticed more braking suddenly out of nowhere. I, I, I got more braking, but it really started to sound a little peculiar. And I picked up a, a loping as I did low speed braking, which is a symptom of a warped uh, rotor usually, like in my truck, the rotor's warped. I had to put new rotors on it. Um, you know, when you're stopping, you get that whoom, whoom, whoom out of it. That's what was happening when I used the rear brakes. And I, I, when I stopped, I couldn't find anything wrong. I just looked and looked and looked, and I, I couldn't find anything wrong with uh, obviously wrong. I checked everything. We came on home. 
I took a closer look, that's when I noticed I was seeing way too much bushing. And, and that pop, uh, and, and this is my well-founded, educated theory here, <laughs> is when this arm finally got enough pressure to, to squeeze in and pop over this washer that allowed the brake to move over and try to recenter itself uh, that's what brought back some of my parking brake uh, now when i went up there fully engaged the parking brake was was good plus uh, if you it wouldn't quite hold an incline but it was hard to push and i knew that i wasn't worried about it i, I just hadn't adjusted it or anything uh, and then you know full off like this everything was fine but I had zero after all of this was put on. I had nothing. I could pull the parking brake and just push the bike wherever I wanted to go. It's like there was no brake here at all. After the loud pop and the next time I stopped, I noticed I had, let's say, good-ish minus. Uh, I didn't have as good of a parking brake, um, but I did have some parking brake back after it popped. And I think that's because the caliper attempted to recenter itself. Now, the other thing, I got to looking at this by eye and I thought, you know, this, this caliper is not straight anymore. Um, this should be floating on these pins. And if this pin's sticking out further or less than this one, that represents a bind. Um, this has been turned. And by eye, I kept thinking, you know, that, that just looks, they look different. They look different. That's, that's all I could come up with. So I got my caliper and I actually measured the exposed um, metal here to the exposed metal on this pin. And there is more than a 32nd of an inch difference here. This one is actually out further. I, I used my, my calipers here uh, and I think I got uh, like 03... 035 somewhere right around there difference between these two pins I went out to my wife's rig and the difference is is 0.01 or less uh, when I measure it so the front of this caliper is still being torqued around it's still being held I don't know what it's done that's probably why I'm getting surging uh, when I stop I get that pulsing feel in the rear end of the rig and I don't know if it has warped the rotor. I, I won't know till I take this off and I'll try to use a straight edge and see, but I am gonna add the space back with washers to this bracket and hopefully get acceptable run out of it. And the reason I had no parking brake right after this was put on is, is basically this was further out. If I had had full brake pads, I, I doubt they could have even got the inner brake pad back on but my brake pads are about i'd say you know close to half gone which gave them a little extra space but uh yeah that that's that's what i found uh, hopefully there's no damage it's just being pulled out i'm going to check everything carefully for for any bending or out of true and try to get this back on so I can just keep doing the, the ride. I'm at over 700 miles now and the break-in service has been done, so. Okay, here's what I found real quick. Um, this was sitting out uh, on the washer. That's why I was getting so much uh, vibration during braking, uh, is I was getting that hard metal on metal um, you know, instead of it all being on the, the plastic bushing, it was pushing on the washer. I pulled the washer. You can see there, there's been some real pressure on here. And, I, and if you look, where the arm was riding on it is just um, polished. That's chatter from the pressure of the uh, arm pushing on it. And that's what I was hearing. That was the groaning sound uh, as the, the rig moved around and the suspension shifted. Okay, I added enough space to get this off the washer. It's now completely on the bushing. It's still a little further out down here than I, I remember the other one being. I've got pictures, I'll go back and look. Um, but this is enough space to get it off the bushing. Uh, this appears to be a little straighter, it's still a little off. 
but um, I, I think we're good right now, so I'm gonna get it put back together. Well, 60 miles today, the brake bracket with the spacers is working perfect. You know, it's amazing. You can ignore things when you're there in person. You don't even notice them, but when you're watching the video, you hear this roaring motorcycle go by interfering with your audio. But uh, anyway, that's what happened here. So I wanted to take a moment and finish the thought. Unfortunately, what is not good is when I go to stop using the rear brakes, I'm still getting that, that surging or loping feel, which is telling me that the rotor is probably warped. So I went back and I used the caliper. Uh, I put it in one position on the bracket, measured the distance to the rotor, then turned the wheel 90 degrees and tried again. And that was the difference. You see that 0 0.071. Uh, telling me that the rotor is kind of Pringle shaped. Not wanting to leave you on a negative note there, I decided to throw in a little bit of riding footage. We're going from Barnesville toward Forsyth, Georgia, and you can see the cooling towers of Plant Shear there in the distance putting off steam. This is, even though it looks like a nuclear power plant, it is not. It is a coal plant. And it's just kind of impressive to me that you can see those cooling towers from so far away in the distance. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. But I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe. There's definitely more to come. Uh, more riding video. But I kind of just wanted to share this with you to, you know, get it out there and, and I guess share the full experience. But you guys uh, hopefully enjoy. Stay safe. And uh, leave a comment. Let me know how you like our videos.